Good evening, this is Tonight at AUBG and I'm Mark Wallerman. Thank you for choosing to watch us on this very first episode. We have plenty of stories to tell you, so stay tuned. In the next half an hour, we'll be uh, seeing what's happening with the Eastern King, the Lord of Kavkaz, the magnificent Russian President Vladimir Putin. But that's not all, since these days everyone's interested in boxing. I'll share a little bit of wisdom about why Kubrat Pulev did not win his match against the other Vladimir, Vladimir Klitschko. If we have to translate the words of the Bulgarian superstar, no problem, we're moving on. We're also moving on so we can see the debut of the extraordinary uh, Anita Miser and her new big hit. We'll recap uh, Thanksgiving for you the American way and in the second portion of the show you'll see quite an unusual interview. So 2014 is going to be over soon and you guys are now probably thinking of all the great things you accomplished this year. Sorry, I'm going to have to disappoint you because surely you didn't accomplish as many things as this guy. You know who I'm talking about? His name starts with Vladi. Oh, no, not this one, guys. Come on. Putin, a former KGB officer, was shaped by the Cold War, watching his Soviet Union collapse from this to this. But now some of the nations that broke away are watching Russia's moves nervously. Nervous, you say? Well, what can we do? Even journalists that are used to these kinds of idiosyncrasies are allowed to get a little scared. Look at that face. Thank you, Martha. Wondering why Diana's upset? On the Russians talking tough tonight. Welcoming Crimea back to fatherland Russia. This after their leader, Vladimir Putin, basking in his moment, said Crimea will soon be theirs. We have already achieved much, he said. There is even more to do. Yes, we can. That's how we do it Vladi style, but it seems it's not only him this time. Check this out. Prince Charles is taking a lot of heat for comments he apparently made comparing Russian President Vladimir Putin to Nazi leader Adolf Hitler. The Prince of Wales and his wife traveled to Canada Monday where they visited an immigration museum in Nova Scotia. According to Daily Mail, Prince Charles was speaking to museum volunteer Marianne Ferguson, a Jewish refugee who fled to Canada just before the Nazi occupation of Poland. The 78-year-old told the British tabloid Prince Charles said to her, quote, and now Putin is doing just about the same as Hitler, this regarding Putin's actions in Ukraine. Yeah, right, but there definitely are some similarities. Look at this guy right here. Hitler like doggies. What about Vladi? Vladi also embraces the occasional U.S. spy. After more than a year in the country under temporary asylum, Edward Snowden has received a three-year residency permit in Russia. Snowden's asylum came to an end July 31st, but he was allowed to stay until a decision was made on his residency application. RT quotes Snowden's lawyer, who said in a press conference, not only will he be able to apply for Russian citizenship in five years, but he'll also be able to travel throughout the country and even stay abroad for not longer than three months. This would be a big improvement on Snowden's current conditions. According to the U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants, asylum seekers in Russia can be fined, detained, and even expelled without the difficult-to-obtain Freedom of Movement registration. Employment, health care, and education are just as hard to get as proper registration is required. But why would you need any registration if Vladi the Magnificent shares with you an unforgettable ride on his noble horse? But you might as well be tempted to say that Hitler was never so kind-hearted. Perhaps Putin is infinitely better. In fact, a message of hatred toward gays and lesbians turned into his first branded beer. What could be better? We want to actually challenge convention, and we've tried to hold a mirror up to something that we feel is, is wrong within Russia, coming up to the Winter Olympics, um, with the, the anti-gay propaganda laws. We, we want to show that, like, straight up, we think it's wrong. We've released a beer that is, is our protest against this. Bit of a personal insult to Putin, though, isn't it? Um, no, I mean, we call him manly. He's, he's obviously, he's proud of his body, so he likes showing it off. We've just, you know, we're complimenting him on that. 
Man, Vladi does like showing off those pecs. He even got featured on a golden coin. He's a real czar now. Terrific. All right, not everyone can see their face on a coin, but if you can afford it, why not? And that's what he said. Man, this guy just doesn't stop. He's literally everywhere, even in the Russian edition of The Voice. So what can we expect in the next season in the reign of Vladi? I would like to make this very clear. Russia guarantees that it will fulfill. 2015 is coming, so brace yourselves. Yeah, Vladi, we're serious. <laughs> Talking about serious stuff, let's move on to the next topic. Two weeks ago, something big happened in the world of boxing. We saw the titanic fight between the best heavyweight boxers in the world. The absolute world champion Vladimir Klitschko met the contestant, the Kupra Pulev, who was unbeaten in all 22 of his professional fights. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! The contestant showed a lot of optimism and conviction before the fight. Дано да благодаря на Господ да ми даде здраве до тогава. Мисля, че при една добра подготовка ще докажем кои са българите и кои съм аз. Let's see what happened when the words were set aside and the fighters got into the ring. The Bulgarian said he was ready to smash Klitschko in the face. Let's see what happened. Ow, oh, that hurt, didn't it? Kubrat's face will look pretty bad for the next few weeks. And speaking about pretty faces, let's see what happened at the, at the last Mrs. Globe pageant that took place last week. <laughs> Scandals remain a persistent part of the Bulgarian society these days. Remember, we used to have our own scandalous uh, beauty pageant, Miss AUBG. I wonder what happened to that thing. I guess it was a victim of Melody Gilbert's documentary class. That's where we really knew it wasn't going to last for too long. But pageants in Bulgaria continue to be scandalous anyway. Have you seen the new Miss Bulgaria? I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but at least she's got talents. The night will be hot, she says. Not exactly what I heard on some of the Bulgarian news shows, but you know, let's see some more. Okay, I admit, we have some of this kind of talent back home in the U.S., but 
We usually don't allow them to do songs, and uh, even with auto-tune involved, yikes. And it only came as a bit of a surprise that she didn't win the international pageant. Uh, I think she suggested it might have been Mafia. But, uh, you know, all these girls commenting on their beauty, I'm sure it's just jealousy. She says she doesn't like her photos photoshopped. I guess she doesn't need to. She already has everything corrected, if you know what I mean. I guess Bulgarian show business is now ready to embrace her full power. And yet, I don't want you to feel bad, guys. There is still some hope on the local scene. Here's a picture of the first Miss Bulgaria back in 1979. Quite impressive. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, as far away as the other side of the planet. Ugh, not that one, guys. I'm talking about the other one. The one I'm talking about is the one that's the center of the universe. The good old U.S. of A. That's the one. It is important to know that turkeys have always had powerful allies. Uh, many of you know that Benjamin Franklin once wrote, I wish the bald eagle had not been chosen as a representative of our country. He is a bird of bad moral character. <laughs> the turkey is, in comparison, a much more respectable bird. Indeed, Mr. Franklin. This reminds me of an old joke. The police officer stops a young man on the street because the police dog started growling at him. The officer approaches and says, young man, the dog here tells me that you are in possession of drugs. At which the young man replies, you're the one talking to the dog, and I'm on drugs? Finally, the Washington Post recently questioned the wisdom of the whole turkey pardon tradition. It's about time someone started questioning why only one bird is the chosen one, and the rest of our feathery friends are taken to the slaughter. As a matter of fact, 300 million turkeys are raised and killed each year, and 45 million of them are killed on Thanksgiving. I guess these birds don't have that many things to be thankful for on this holiday. Here at AUBG, however, we are thankful for many things. We've got the great food, the great internet, the unstoppable flow of incoming students, and to celebrate, our own dining services organized a Thanksgiving festivity that featured traditional American meals, everything from sweet potatoes to pumpkin pie. But somebody almost forgot to put a turkey in the oven. For a moment there, it seemed as if the university administration followed President Obama's example and pardoned all the turkeys of Blagojevgrad. In the end, everything turned out fine, and a bird finally made it to the table. We'll be right back after a short break. Stay tuned for our special guest tonight, economics professor and radio host, Mark Leonard. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight at AUBG. I'm Mark Wallman, and uh, we're going to introduce you to a man who you see everywhere on campus. Take a look. Do you believe? They will search for answers. Be prepared. He has been chosen. A hero to take an unforgettable journey where no one has dared to go for honor, for hope, for justice, for liberty. They can attack him. They can judge him. But they can never break him. Season premiere begins tonight. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, now you know who I was talking about, uh, professor of economics and uh, all-around great guy, Mark Leonard. Uh, welcome to the Tonight at AUBG. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. So we were talking a little bit earlier about, uh, about Thanksgiving. Uh, how, did your, uh, how did your Thanksgiving go? 
I, I thought our Thanksgiving went, went rather well. Uh, we had a lot of people over at the house. Um, it wasn't on Thursday, but uh, because of classes and, and whatnot around here, but uh, uh, it was a good Thanksgiving. And you got a little turkey. Uh, you got a little turkey in. As yeah, well. yeah. We bought we bought a couple of turkeys, and uh, and every and everybody that came brought something uh, with them, and and so we had uh, we had all of the usual things plus. Uh, a few English dishes that uh, that we didn't expect, and uh, it was it was nice. Oh, great! Uh, best English dish that came uh, that came calling? Um, probably the pickle lily that we sort of held back for later. Um, it's it's like pickled uh, curried cucumbers and and uh, and cauliflower. That doesn't sound like any Thanksgiving I've been to. No, no. <laughs> so. Uh, Bulgaria tends to be a place that uh, has become a melting pot, especially at AUBG. Uh, when you first got here, was there anything about uh, your arrival that shocked you or surprised you? No, not really. Not in terms of just arriving. I think uh, I, because I had come here to interview for the job, um, I, I kind of had some, some warning about, about things about town and, and kind of what the, what the place was like. Um, and so it wasn't quite so, so surprising for me. Um, well, what, what brought you here? Uh, quite, quite honestly, I, we have a thing called Job Opportunities for Economists, which has PhD level positions in economics and uh, uh, AUBG advertised a position there in, in, a field, in fields that, that, I, that I work in. And I turned to, to my wife and said, hey, how about Bulgaria? And she said, sounds like fun. So I interviewed and here we are. So now that you've been here for, this is your fourth year, I think, uh, it's because it's my fourth yes. year as well. Um, what, uh, what, has, uh, what does it feel like now? Well, um, it's, it's, gotten, it's gotten easier, it's gotten smoother. I have a, a lot better uh, understanding of, of, the, of the way, of, of how my students are and what, what sorts of strengths and weaknesses that they bring. Um, I'm getting better at teaching classes that, that were classes I hadn't taught before I came here, like industrial organization, uh, which is related to, to fields I work in, but it's not specifically things that I, that I had done before. So how does in industry organize itself? Well, the idea is that, is that, you know, there are rules about how markets operate and there are expectations about how markets behave based on the number of firms that are that are in the that are in the market, and there are ways that we that we define firms and that we define markets, and and these are all somewhat complicated and, and interesting questions. And so, um, so that's 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 what I teach. I teach. A, it's basically a class about rules, um, which is which is good for everybody. But I think especially with the mix of students that we have, a class on institutions is really is really helpful. Yeah. Well, rules is uh, is an interesting. Uh Kind of jumping off point, you guys, you and uh, your wife uh, Lynette, you were involved in starting the cooking club, yes. which, is, which is all about sort of rules and uh, and uh, measurements. Uh, how did how did that yeah. come about? Well, it was uh, it was suggested that, that there be a cooking club, and I said, well, okay, if there's a cooking club, I, I'll you know help be the the faculty advisor for the cooking club, and and we got a group of kids together that were interested in doing it and i said okay this is your club so so you know i can help you with the process of setting up a club but it's got to be you doing it cuz you know that's the way student organizations work and uh, here we are three late two three years later and uh, and it's still going and um, and we've added a lot of new people this year which is good and what's the best dish that gets uh, gets uh, that's come out of the cooking club uh I'm trying to think, probably, probably the thing that's been, the two things I think that, that really sort of developed as something that the cooking club did was uh, the first year when we did the Christmas Bazaar, we had a, uh, actually it wasn't the Christmas Bazaar, we were baking for BCC that year, mm -hmm. and we had a batch of brownies that came out wrong, and we figured out that, well, if we roll these in powdered sugar, they, you know, we've got these little truffle-like things, and those, and those went over really well. Um, and then we developed a, 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 our own recipe for cocoa, for hot chocolate, um, that, that, um, that has been quite successful. But, but certainly the most popular dish, I think, on campus is, is, is brownies. Okay, all, all cooking all the time. Um, what, uh, what are things, uh, what are your, what's your relationship like with students? How do you, uh, how do you kind of deal with the dynamic of your, your, you and your students? Um, it, it depends on the class and it depends on the student. Um, 
I, I like, especially my upper level classes, to be more discussion based. I like them to talk. I like them to, to read things and we come to class and do we they, discuss. Do they talk back? Um, yeah, some of them more than others, but, but, uh, but they all kind of participate in things. They, you know, just about everybody in the class, especially like my 400 level uh, IO class, this semester has been really good. They've, they've all added something, you know, they, each of them have added something in the discussion at some point during the semester. So as we kind of roll through the holidays, uh, what, are, what are your kind of memories of, of uh, say, Christmas and, uh, and how, how, do, how, have that, how has that changed in, in Bulgaria? Um, well, I mean, cr I, probably my recollections are, are different than I think a lot of people. My, I, I have some, some memories of, of like visiting my extended family at Christmas, but I, I th remember that being sort of rare. Um, Lynette doesn't give you any big presents now? Oh, uh, yeah, occasionally, but for the most part, we've, we've decided that we're going to pool our Christmas gift money and, and, uh, and do something nice when we go. Uh, we've, we visited a lot of Christmas markets around Eastern and Central Europe over, uh, for the three years that for we've been For beer tasting, here. I think, right? Uh, hot, hot mulled wine uh, right. and beer when it's available, but usually it's, it, from where we've gone, it's, it's mostly been mulled wine. What's the best alcohol that you've drunk, you've had in the region? Probably, well, oh, that's a hard one. Come on. Um, that is really, there, there's, my neighbor's rakia is, is wonderful. There you go. Um, definitely, certainly in the top three. We are, we are in Bulgaria, yeah. so you have to say <laughs> rakia is your favorite drink. It, well, but his wine is also really, really good, so I'm not sure, you know, which one do I go with? Do I go with the wine and, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and sort of damage the rakia, or do I go with the rakia and do the same to the wine? I don't know. They're both really good. Well, it's, it, the, the nice thing about being a non-Bulgarian is we don't have to follow any rules, uh, and we can just do whatever we want. So uh, New Year's is just around the corner. Resolutions? Um, I'm not much of a resolution person. I, I don't tend to, to make resolutions, um, probably because it's, it's always felt to me like the point of a resolution is to break it by the end of January. They don't so. have to be healthy rev resolutions. Yeah, no. They could be unhealthy ones. No, like, uh, be. like I had a resolution last year to drink 100 different beers, and I, 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 I set my mind to do it, and I did it. That is true. That is true. Yeah, no, one, one year I set a resolution to not read the comics on, uh, or not read the comments on, on, on online posted news stories, and I did a pretty good job of not doing that during the year, so. So, so you didn't. Do that so you didn't get angry. Uh, precisely, precisely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight at AUBG, and uh, we're 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 really happy that you could join us and uh, spend a little time with us. All right. Thank you. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, tonight at AUBG. We had a great show. We had a good time, and uh, we hope that you'll join us tomorrow for another tonight at AUBG.